that sign right there that's why we are in mobile alabama or foley alabama actually we have partnered with anglers resources and we are going to be representing fuji and point blank products next year so i'm getting a rod building course because i will be trying to build my own rods for the 2020 elite series so that's why we're down here let's go learn some stuff about building rods in the next day that's where we at so far i kept it as minimal as possible i want this thing to be super light i'm using all this purple thread for all my seven foot three rods that's one of the concepts i'm doing for these i'm going to try to make different color rats for the different color rods because all the blanks look exactly the same i'll be able to pick out which ones are seven foot threes so you can see this rod, this guide i'm going to show you all me wrapping is the number four small foot runner best way i found to do it is let me zoom this in a little bit is to just put a small piece of tape right there around the guide as y'all can see right there i got a small piece of tape on the front half of the guide it just peels off really easily got the guide on there loosely so let it let's wrap this thing so i wrap it over twice by hand use my thumb right here to lift up on the thread and jump it over those two wraps then i just start winding it so i'm gonna pull this tag in down just a little Then cut it off with this knife. All right. That way it won't make it a little fuzzy, because or at least not one where you'd be able to be looking at a lot. This is not how the pros do it. This is how I do it. I'm a self-admitted rookie. So on the next wrap. I'm just going to peel that tape up. And while I'm wrapping, peel the tape off. And the guide will stay there. I'm at the right angle now, so it's overlaying perfectly. So I'm going to Try to make it look as pretty as possible. I do got one really loose thread on the end right there. Just make you a little loop with a piece of thread like this and then slide it up under the thread you're wrapping with just like that. So I put it up on top of that and just wind over that five, four or five wraps is ideal. Put my thumb right here on top of the guide wrap, twist it around, cut the thread off, bring the thread up, run it through that little loop we just put under the thread, there we go, alright, pull the thread back down, grab my little orange loop I had right here, and that will tuck a piece of thread underneath the other threads make it look good make it look pretty for the camera usually try to make myself look pretty for the camera it don't really work so this probably won't either and then let me show you all this there it is purple wrap thread you can see a little bit of gaps on top of that real foot I'll fix that up with the branching tool before I epoxy it but that's how I do it this the final coat of epoxy going on the rod everything is setting up boom so I got to admit making this sucker right here was a heck of a struggle but we got it done all it's got to do is dry now strapping a reel to it either this evening or tomorrow and I will be casting with it so that's it got the little purple wraps boom right there hot off the presses the blank is a seven foot three medium heavy extra fast but it does seem to be a little bit more on the fast side instead of an extra fast so it's perfect for what I want this is gonna be my jig rod most of the time started off with the super small super compact SK real seat super small piece of cork that fits right in there 
small little butt cap, kept it very, very light. Got a lock and nut on here just to keep everything cinched down. And then transitioning to, I've got the Titanium SIC Slim Guides. Started with that one. This one's a newer concept from Fuji. It keeps the line a little bit higher coming out of the reel because it's got a taller frame. Just has a better transition point from coming. The, the line comes out of the reel in kind of a straight line. Just kind of feeds straight into that and then transitions down to this one. If you start off with a small guide, it will have like a pitch point down here with the lines coming at a downward angle and it just doesn't keep it high enough off the blank. It'll slap the blank and cause backlashes or just cause the line to not flow off as smooth as it can possibly slope, come off the rod. Transition straight into some four foot runner guide. That's the size I wanted for throwing fluorocarbon. I have no problem with throwing that size for 20 pound fluorocarbon. It just flows through there really, really well. Transition straight down, wrap this thing in purple, all the way down to the tip. All these guides are titanium. This rod is absolutely a beast. Well, I'm going to do all my seven foot three medium heavies. Going to wrap them all in purple like this. The purple didn't show up as good as I kind of wanted to, but it's still you can tell it's purple. And then all my rods, I'm going to put this orange tip on them. It just looks really, really good to me. It's a little accent piece. Just something to make it just a little bit different. Rod turned out very, very well. Very happy with it. So let's go get it wet. All right, got my jig reel right here. Just a high speed, low profile bait casting reel. This is an 8.2 to one actually. Gonna put it on this rod to see how everything feels. This has 20 pound fluorocarbon on it. That's my go-to reel. I mean, line size for jigs. So put everything down, get it pretty snug. First time ever on your custom rod. That's it. And I've got this locking nut right here. That is going to just make sure, no matter what, this thing will never back out. What do you think? Oh my goodness, it feels good. It feels really good. This is about a five and a half ounce reel, so it did add a lot of weight. So actually a six ounce reel did add a lot of weight, but the rod feels very, very tip light. So this would be a good jig rod. Let's go catch one on this sucker. All right, chest cam strapped up. Got some rods right here. Me and my father-in-law are headed to a river that runs into the Mississippi River, kind of through Collierville, kind of through Memphis, and then dumps into the Mississippi River. So we're headed there now. And while we're on the way, I went fishing there probably about a month ago, a month and a half ago, caught a few fish. So I'll show y'all that right now while we're on the way. Then catch back up with the live, kind of live, not so live action in just a few minutes. Oh my goodness, does this look good. Holy crap. Oh, I had one. Let me go show Chris. That's a good one. Look at that one. That's a chunky one. Where was he at? In one of them trees. I missed him. Now I threw it back in the car. That's What's about, about two and a quarter. A yep. That little jig. Two and a quarter. He might be a two and a half. He's thick, dude. Yeah, he's a big heavy one. Thick one. Freezing cold. If we could put a boat in, I think we would waylay him. Oh, yeah. All right. Another thick one, man. Look at how he ate that jig. That's how you know you got a good hook gap on your jig when they eat it like that. Just go show them the other one I got. You see him? What? You got another one? Another thick one. He's over two pounds. We need to come put in at that boat ramp. Yeah. I mean, that's. Two, 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 three, two, four. Backwoods bassin. I mean, these are good ones, man. If we had a boat, I bet we could catch 20. I'm 
try not to belly flop him so I'm probably belly flop myself. Got another one. Yeah. Yeah. I know what they're sitting on now. If I had a boat, I would mash them. On them little skinny skinny trees piled up beside the tree, beside the bank, like right beside the bank. Little 14 incher, pound and a quarter probably. All right, check it out. We at the river now. Black and blue jig. My brand new jig rod. It ain't, I got it here in the light. I can tell where I messed up at. It ain't that pretty, but I'll be using it. Throws really good. Good and two. There we go. First fish on the new rod. <laughs> Big old spot. Heck yeah. Didn't even take that long. Pretty spot. Look at that thing. That's what I'm talking about. Beautiful fish. All right. New day now. Obviously, we're not fishing today. Well, we might go in a little while, but we're not. This is not the day that I caught those fish. So I was gonna put all those fish catches from that day in the same video, but we caught a bunch of them off the bank. So we're gonna make it in two videos. I don't wanna make a 25 or 30 minute long video. So split it up, check back in a couple days and watch us waylay those fish from the Wolf River off the bank. Bunch of spotted bass showed up to play that day. The last time we went, we caught our largemouth. This time, spotted bass just showed up. I don't know why, the water got stained up and there was a lot of current. Spotted bass just flooded the bank. So that first fish, that was the first fish I've caught on a custom built rod. That thing was pretty meaningful to me actually, even though it was just a pound and a half, pound three quarter spotted bass. But first impression on the rod, that thing is extremely light. I did not know that using high quality guides could make that big of a difference. I mean, I could tell a huge difference in the castability and the sensitivity of that rod using those guides. But the epoxy could use a little bit of work. I'm gonna have to get them a little bit prettier over time. I will be better at that. But first impressions, I'm in love with that rod. So check back a couple days. Watch us waylay those fish off the bank. I will see y'all. Thank y'all for watching. If y'all like this video, leave a like, leave a comment. I will be putting a little bit more B-roll kind of stuff, me building rods in the future. But see y'all.